All right. This is a little video on how to clean your nitro engine and maintain it. Hey, so a lot of people will say, hey, my engine's overheating really bad. And I'll look at it and be like, well, <laughs> it's covered in dirt and mud and grease. That's a bad thing. You want to keep your engine clean. Super clean. You want to clean all between these fins, keep your crankcase, everything all nice and clean. All these fins have to be all clean. Uh, what will happen is if they're not, the oil and the dirt will retain the heat in the engine. It'll make it get hotter and hotter and hotter, which is bad for your engine. Make it harder to tune. Bad things happen. So what I recommend doing... I uh, have to go get some. Hang on a second. Oh, stupid. I hate this camera. It doesn't even have freaking paws on it. Cheap piece of shit. Anyways. Is take your self-container... Remove your pull start if you have one. If you have a regular back plate, like a bump start engine, leave it. Uh, plug your exhaust port with something like that, like a paper towel. Make sure that it's completely shoved full so nothing can get in there. Plug off your carburetor. Make sure no anything can get down your um, high speed needle inlet. Leave your glow plug in. Put your engine in a container. Get yourself an old toothbrush that you're never going to use again. Get yourself some of this stuff. 99% rubbing alcohol. Or methyl hydrate, also known as heat if you live in America, or denatured alcohol. Uh, wear gloves when you're using this, even this too. Um, this shit's really bad for you, so be careful. Use it at your own risk. Uh, and then what you want to do is take your toothbrush and scrub all the fins out and get all the dirt and grime off your engine until it's nice and clean. Um, that will also improve the life of your engine as well, plus make it run better. Uh, I see a lot of people going, oh, just clean your engine with nitro fuel. Pour this full of nitro fuel and soak your engine in there. Don't do that. Uh, reason being is because nitro fuel contains oil, and once the nitro and everything evaporates off, you're left with an oily film all over your engine, and as soon as you go and hit the dirt again, what's going to happen is all the dust and dirt's going to stick to that oil and bake onto your engine and make it overheat even worse than it did before. So there is something to keep in mind. Now, when it comes to cleaning the inside of your engine, um, you want to clean the outside first so you don't get any of the shit on the inside. Take your carburetor off. Note direction of all your parts. Take pictures. Um, you know, anything like that. Take your cylinder head off. Take your carburetor off. Take off your pull starter and back plate if you have one. Crankshaft out, piston and sleeve out, blah, blah, blah. And then, same thing again, clean out your engine, obviously with a fresh clean container. You want to make sure everything on that inside of that engine is clean. Like, you want to make sure your hands are clean when you're doing this. You want to make sure you're, you know, don't use the same toothbrush. Your container that you're going to clean your parts in is clean. Because if there's any little bit of, like, grit or dirt off the outside of the engine that gets on the piston and sleeve or on the crankshaft, It'll destroy your engine. So you want to make sure that you clean the outside before the inside. Now, what I do is I clean the piston and sleeve. Make sure they're all nice and pretty like they should be. Clean the crankshaft. You can use a toothbrush and kind of clean all the parts of it. Inspect the bearings too. Make sure they don't look funny or they're not falling apart or anything like that. Make sure they turn nice and free. Um, without the piston and sleeve and you should be able to turn the crankshaft and not feel any kind of binding or roughness. If you feel any of that, you probably need to replace your bearings. Um, when it comes to storing these engines, I see a lot of people make a big mistake. Putting WD-40 inside your engine. I don't ever recommend that to anybody. Reason being, WD-40... isn't really an oil. See how it goes away? WD-40 is a solvent. And what do solvents do? They wash oil away. You don't want that. You don't want your engine to sit dry. The other thing WD-40 does is it attacks the O-rings, like in your carburetor and stuff. If you have a backplate O-ring, this engine uses a paper gasket. 
and a steel shielded front bearing. But if you have a nice expensive engine, well this was at one point, um, with O-rings in it, the WD-40 will attack, the petroleum will attack the silicone and make your O-rings blow up and leak and do all sorts of stuff and you don't want that. Because uh, O-rings often, depending on your engine, can be expensive. Or you might not be able to find them again, depending on what engine you have and how old it is. Um, the other thing that WD-40 does is it kind of mixes. Like, if you shut your engine off and you think, Oh, I'm just going to spray it full of WD-40 and let it sit over the course of a winter or a year or something. You know, the WD-40 will kind of attack the oils in your fuel. You know, like whatever fuel and oil is kind of left in there when you shut it off. It'll kind of attack that and leave like this goo, like this gunge that'll destroy your bearings and leave a film on everything and just, it's disgusting. You can't even wash the stuff off. It'll just leave like a sludge. Um, and it evaporates off eventually, which is, you don't want that. So when you go to start your engine, it'll be dry. What I recommend using... Good old fashioned cheap Great Plains after an oil. It doesn't have to be this brand, but any after an oil won't work. Uh, or if you don't have any after an oil, but you live like near a, you know, like a, a tool supply store or something like that in your area, you can also use air tool oil. Air tool oil and after an oil, believe it or not, are basically the same thing. They're both a light synthetic oil that contains rust inhibitors and corrosion inhibitors and moisture control it, like a moisture controlling agent. Because you gotta think, if you have an air tool, like an impact gun, air from an air compressor has moisture in it. And you don't want moisture in your impact gun because it'll mess up those metal parts in there and rust them. So this will prevent that. Same thing in here. So you can use air tool oil or this. Um, like I said, don't use WD-40. I mean, use it on other stuff. Yeah, fine, it works great for lots of stuff, but this, no, don't do that. And it doesn't really burn that well in a glow engine. It'll destroy your glow plugs and kind of carbon up, and just, it's not good. Just trust me. You're going to be letting this stuff sit for a long time? Use the proper stuff. Um, the other thing you guys have probably seen me use lots is this. That is... Castor oil. Um, this just happens to be my favorite castor oil. I'm not sponsored by anybody here, but uh, I like Claude's products. They're great. Um, you can, but it's not recommended. It even tells you right on the back of the bottle. And this is actually recommended for use with glow engines. It says it right there. Um, not to use it as a storage lubricant. So you don't want to fill your engine up with this and let it sit for five years because it'll get all gummy uh, over time. But I do add this to my fuel and I do use this for engine assembly. So when I put this engine together uh, a while back, I put you know some on the bearings, a little bit on the crank, a little bit on the crank pin, some on the piston and sleeve. And uh, the fact that this is degum castor oil, it seems like it takes a really long time for anything to happen. This engine's already been run a couple times, cleaned and then filled with after run oil. So it's fine. Um, I recommend when you're going to do it, put a couple drops down here, a couple drops down the glow plug hole, and a few drops down the exhaust port. You don't have to put them down the exhaust port. I do. It's just what I like to do uh, if my engine's off my car. And then rotate the engine over, pull it over, spin it, use your bump box without the glow plug in it, and uh, let that oil kind of coat the internal parts. And then store it for as long as you need. But like I said, stay away from that shit. Um, you know, use these two right here to clean your engine out with, outside and inside. A clean engine's a happy engine. Anyways, uh, this is just a video on cleaning your engine and all that stuff, so some friendly advice. Anyways, take it easy, guys.